Uh, is it, does anyone see the get the notification that's recording? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Again, to repeat, um, this, so my name is Edward. I'm the president of ML SJSU. And today we're going to go over the spring 2021 info session. The things we're going to talk about is ML SJSU, who we are, um, how our club can help you as a student at San Jose State, how you can help our club uh, as, a, as a member and the changes that we made for spring 2021. So the main change that we made for this semester is that we set up something called a project team. And we have a few um, conditions that we have for people who would like to join the project team. Uh, but one thing we would like to let everyone know is you can still be a general member and attend and join in on the meetings. We'll just, I'll just explain a little bit more in detail about the difference between the, the project and the general, general member. And finally, uh, we're gonna go right into setting up Miniconda Jupyter Notebook, which is basically the environment that you can do to develop Python notebooks, which is gonna be the format that we often use uh, when we work on machine learning. And it's gonna be the requirement that you need to have for the trial project. So who are we? Who, what is MLSJSU? So MLSJSU uh, stands for Machine Learning at San Jose State University. We're the machine learning uh, student org at San Jose State. Uh, we basically, um, our main goal is to help students at San Jose State uh, who are interested in machine learning to basically get an opportunity to look more into the machine learning field, uh, whether that be through projects or research paper readings, reviews. Uh, but our main focus this semester is gonna actually be helping increase your proficiency through working on projects, uh, through project groups. Uh, but one thing we, I want to, I'd like everybody to know is that we're also a really close community of students that are all trying to help each other succeed. So don't feel like, you know, we're all here to just do our own thing. We're all here because we have, have a shared interest, right? And that's a, a, very, a very exciting interest of, of a trending field that's really hot lately. So yeah, don't, don't um, I, I want to make sure that we're all, we're all good, close and a close community together. So how can ML SJSU help you as a student? So we are a close community of like-minded individuals um, and we would be a group that you can work with uh, to do whatever project that you'd like to accomplish or join a current project. We also have uh, solid leadership and project teams that would be able to keep you accountable and on track on working on your actual projects uh, and uh, improvement in your machine learning journey. And you'd also be updated on events that ML at, at SJSU will be organizing this semester. We plan to do, uh, we have some um, events that we're looking at organizing, uh, potentially this or the following semester. So we just be updated on, on those. And we are looking at providing GPU resources uh, for, for current members, uh, project members, uh, but this is currently a work in progress. So uh, this is something that uh, we will give updates on throughout the semester. But how can, how can you help the ML SJSU community? Um, keep in mind that we're all fellow students, right? We're not, there's no, there's no professors here, right? We're all here because we want to be here, right? We're not, it's not a class that you need to go to or some sort of thing that you have to attend, right? This is all basically based on your own desire and um, drive to, to be more interested, take, take that further step in, in, in being involved in machine learning. So what we want to do, what we'd like all, all members to be is be proactive we, right, um, there's no real difference between someone who's been an officer and you besides the fact that the officer was here for a few more semesters and have been a little bit more proactive with the club. So again, if you have any ideas or anything that you, you think, right, you can't do because you're a new member, don't, don't, um, don't feel afraid to, to bring it up to us. I, I think we, we're open to anything that you have or, um, or any ideas that you might wanna look at doing. The next one is make an impact. So we've had great successes from previous uh, leadership and uh, members um, through organizing projects in the past. Um, this includes ML for High School, uh, which is something that um, Gaston helped organize. He's the vice president. He uh, basically, it's, um, it's basically a collaboration between us and a high school to basically help teach uh, high schoolers the beginnings of machine learning. Uh, we also had our previous president, uh, uh, Gorov uh, organized a climate change panel, which we got a great um, 
members from industry and, re and academia to talk about how machine learning helps, uh, helps solve the problem of climate change. So I think we've had a great past history of, of great um, impactful events that we held. And um, we'd like for, to continue that tradition by new members like you who can help create, continue to make this impact that this club makes every semester. Uh, but most importantly, have fun. We're a club that are all here to collaborate, to learn and develop our machine learning skills together. So uh, one thing that we're trying to do um, this semester to help, help with that is to uh, have a discord. So basically it helps encourage more collaboration and um, more, I guess, um, a, a, a clo more closeness by being able to, I guess, talk and just chat with each other um, more, more leisurely and help make Memo SJSU a more fun place to be. Because I think if we're all, if we make that, if we make the club a fun place that we want to be at, I think we can, um, it, it will help with us just being able to help accomplish our goals. Not just, um, ha you know, not just uh, having fun, but also uh, with productivity. So some of the things, that, some of the main changes we made for the 2021 spring semester, um, this would probably be new to new members, but for um, members who are coming back, uh, we just want to mention that we are now making projects the focus of our club. Um, why are we doing that? Because projects are basically um, one great way for you to uh, quickly learn how to do, do things, raise your proficiency. Projects are what you can show on your resume, right? So they're a solid, tangible thing that you can show when you apply to internships and jobs. And finally, projects are fun and challenging, right? Um, you can basically choose which project you wanna join, or even come up with your own project idea, right? So if there's something, some problem that you think um, is some, something that you can solve yourself through machine learning, um, you have the freedom to do that. You have the freedom to be proactive and do what you wanna do. Um, you can also join some of the project teams that uh, are currently going on. So some of the projects involve uh, posture tracking. So basically um, what this is, is we have basically a camera that's able to track your posture and by tracking your, the, the points in your body, we can determine whether you have good or bad sitting posture. Um, so that's gonna be using computer vision, which is basically um, using machine learning and uh, cameras together. Uh, and I think object nav, does anyone else wanna elaborate on this one? Yes, object nav. Uh, object nav is a project based on a uh, Facebook's challenge. It is a challenge to make an agent that can uh, use uh, visual information to navigate within uh, within a house to a specified object. So it is uh, uh, a combination of uh, uh, visual uh, learning and uh, reinforcement learning. Uh, it's quite fun. Gaurav, if you have anything to add, that's mostly. Okay, um, then the visual QA can, um, Helen uh, or... So the visual QA, it's it's less visual now, but it's a, it's a Q and A chat that we're working on or starting to work on to answer questions in a textbook. Uh, you can think of it as a, the replacing the index of a textbook. Great, thank you. And then and the then, uh, virtual okay. try-on project is a project that uh, I worked on, uh, published a paper on it. So currently uh, I'm stepping away from this project. So if anyone's interested uh, in this project, it would make a, a great master's project. I can connect you with the research lab on campus and uh, it would make a great um, senior project for our undergrad as well. So if you're interested, uh, you could uh, for sure uh, message me. Great, thank you. Thank you, Goral. So yeah, so those are some of the project teams that, um, right, some of the examples of some of the projects that we've worked on. Um, if there, if any of these projects are something that you might be interested in, uh, if, if some, you feel free to reach out to us and we can see if um, you'd be a good fit. Moving on. So yeah, so these are an example of the past projects that we've, we've done before in the past. So. Um, these are all ideas that 
members have come up with, right? So keep in mind, right, we're also students just like you. So if you have your own idea, feel free to bring it up and uh, and see, you know, any any problem that you see that you'd like to solve or any project ideas that you have. Um, if you become a project member, um, this is something that you can do on your own. So continuing on. So how to join? Uh, I think uh, Gorov can take it from here. Yeah, sure. So um, succinctly, we just made a flowchart to make this easier for you. So essentially, the question is, uh, so if you want to join our club, we've now added uh, some additional requirements. And so um, we've put into place a trial project. And so this trial project, uh, so uh, if you're a previous MLSJSU member, so if you've uh, been here a semester or a year before, then you don't need to do a trial project. If you've completed an ML course, then you don't need to do a trial project. And if you've done a previous ML project, so if you have a GitHub link or something of that nature, or um, any kind of um, website where you've deployed a model, then you don't need to do a trial project. Otherwise, uh, we have uh, put together some options for you to complete a trial project. I would if you'd click on it. And so overall, the goal of this trial project is to uh, judge uh, how motivated you are to kind of do machine learning work. So you can definitely, uh, you can read through this document, but I think if you could scroll all the way down to the project options. Um, <clears throat> there's two project options. Um, the first is a traditional machine learning project. Um, I think, Helen, do you want to talk about this? Uh, so this is um, a traditional machine learning project. It's a Titanic competition. Uh, so you'll have to sign up for a Kaggle account to join the competition or to view the data. And the links are provided. Uh, it, it, it's basically a step-by-step -step through um, a, basic, a basic machine learning problem where you'll import the data and predict the survival date, survival um, data in the end, and then compare your results with the final test CSV. And there are options for you to do more if you like. Yeah, so uh, again, so the, the point of this is uh, there's a lot of uh, resources out there. So we want to see if you can take advantage of these resources and actually put together a hello world for machine learning. Um, there's a second project option if you go all the way down. And the second option is to implement a convolution operation. So this is a 2D deep learning convolution operation using only the standard NumPy library. So if you've never heard of a uh, convolution operation, there's a link there for you to learn about it. And then you can, uh, there, there's a function head that you can uh, go off of to implement the function. So uh, with either of these projects, uh, you can, um, implement them and then send them our way. And we'd love to talk to you about uh, your interests and how you work on the project. And I, yeah, think, I, Sorry, uh -huh. go ahead. I think the um, the due date of the project is gonna be next Thursday. So uh, you have, I think uh, a little less than a week. So even if you're not able to finish it, uh, just submit what you have and we wanna see that you've worked on it and uh, tried, uh, try. So that, that's, that's the point of this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and one, one other thing is uh, we want to emphasize that you don't need prior machine learning experience to complete these projects. Um, these, these projects were designed so that even if you don't have prior experience, um, doing your re the re some research on Google or YouTube would be able to give you enough help for you to complete this. Um, so it's just, a, I guess, a way for us to know whether you have the ability to, I guess, do a little bit of your own research and initiative to, to complete this project, because uh, this is to join the project team, right? So um, we would like for people who are part of the project team to have some experience in knowing how to contribute to a project. Um, and keep in mind that, um, that we, you, the deliverables, the things you actually need to submit is something called a Python notebook file. So this is going to be basically um, a file that you create in an environment that we will go over later in the later in the session on how to set up. And also, one thing to keep in mind is uh, after you submit the Python notebook file, you will need to book an, a, a quick 15-minute uh, appointment, 
And it's just basically some questions that we'll ask so that we know that you understand the code that you wrote. Um, so um, if you can explain the code, then you know that you, um, you really did understand the project and how to build it. Does anyone have any questions so far about this? Okay, great. Um, and keep in mind that this uh, meeting is recorded. So if you um, are having trouble with understanding how to set up the Jupyter Notebook environment or, or the, the Mini Conda environment, then um, you can always revisit this and, and check on our YouTube page. Our YouTube page and um, this, this recording will both be on there and we'll send you the link on Slack and Discord. So I'm wondering um, who here of the members who are not previous MLSJC members, uh, who's uh, have prior ML experience via project or course? Um, you, uh, you could just brag about yourself right now. It's a great time. Or if you don't have any previous experience, uh, what are you interested in? Why? Looks like uh, Hasisa is it? I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but okay, great. Yeah, he took the data mining class. So for the data mining class, we, we just we just like like a screenshot or some sort of a transcript for you to email, and the email that again to to send it to is um, is uh, sjsumlclub at gmail dot com. Uh, keep in mind you can also like. Um, submit like the like online courses you might have taken by like like you know Coursera and Ruin um, course if you if you have any um, evidence that you completed that you can also submit that and that would be sufficient yeah and yeah so it looks like another person said he took a ml course before so just uh, you could just uh, email your transcript to sjsumlclub at gmail.com regardless uh, uh, unless you've, you've already been a full member of ml sjsu before um, you will need to email SJSU ML Club, either by submitting your trial project or your machine learning course um, or, uh, or, equivalent, or equivalent experience. So this includes like if you already did a machine learning project before, um, maybe you, you have like a Git, GitHub, if you can send your GitHub link or some sort of way to, for us to see what you did in your project, that would also be sufficient. Uh, keep in mind that yeah, it um, it would need to it would need to be a completed course though. So if you're currently taking a machine learning course this semester, um, that by itself won't be sufficient. So we would need uh, we would need you to do the trial project. Thanks for sharing. Um, anyone else have any anything? Uh, I think uh, we could probably take a few minutes to like talk about what you're why you're interested why you're here. Introduce yourself. Um, I'd like to get to know them, unless you all don't want to. <laughs> I mean, we we can go we can go and I guess talk to see each of the each of the members and see why they're interested um, and how how they heard about us. Like, um... hi, can I speak? Yeah, absolutely. I am hi, I'm Mohammed Aspa, and uh, I'm in my final semester. show. I'm doing my master's in engineering management at SJSU. So I took classes like uh, data mining, uh, database management, and uh, basic statistics before in my coursework. So data mining inspired me uh, a lot. And uh, I learned many ML models there. So I have, right now, uh, I'm applying for data analytics roles. So uh, I have done uh, two projects based on uh, machine learning. One is uh, uh, customer churn prediction and uh, uh, employee absenteeism uh, prediction uh, you know, using uh, uh, general uh, classification and uh, regression models. So uh, right now, I think it's very basic uh, to apply for an, uh, 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 data science roles. So I need to upgrade myself in something like uh, more projects on uh, TensorFlow and uh, NLP so that I can stand out in, uh, with my resume. Yeah, that's all welcome. Thanks for sharing. Very cool. Thank you for sharing. So I have, I have on that. So what kind of projects will, will this club be doing in upcoming days? 
So how, I, how it's going to work? Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just I can answer it. So uh, we detailed a few of the projects, like the QA and the object detection, but mm -hmm. it's less everyone's focused on a project and more like uh, like people just kind of, or I, I'd imagine the direction we want to go is people can like pitch a project and they'll find mm -hmm. uh, people that are willing to work on it. Or if you don't have any ideas, uh, someone mm -hmm. usually has some idea or something that they want to work towards, whether it's like a concrete application or they say something like, I want to learn this technology to go mm -hmm. along with this uh, like machine learning skill. So I want a project that will help me learn that. So okay. it, it's kind of hard to answer, but uh, it's it varies and it can cover a lot of like a wide variety of topics. So like uh, like for example, I've never done an NLP project before, but I'm working on the Q and A chatbot project. So I'm using it as a way to get ex uh, some experience with NLP. Okay. Yeah, keep in mind we're not all doing the same yeah. project. We have different groups and multiple projects going on. So you would most likely be in one project group. So um, what you, what your project, what your team might be working on might not be what most of the club is working on. But what we do is we'll be giving updates. So we'll basically help keep you being accountable mm -hmm. to make sure that you, you're continuing to progress in your project. And of course we can collaborate too, right? So if there's like maybe um, a specific subject that multiple people in different project groups will be interested in mm -hmm. or, or have experience in, then we can all contribute during our pro meet weekly meetings and updates okay. or, or like the online collaboration through Discord and, and uh, Slack. Okay. Thank you for sharing. And uh, like one, one more thing, uh, do you do yeah. any projects uh, related to big data, something in Apathy Spark or something? We've actually, you, uh, we did like a small tutorial, uh, mm -hmm. like a sort of playing with PySpark uh, last semester that we have like on our GitHub. Uh, mm -hmm. Specifically, we don't do, like we don't intentionally do big data specifically. If you want to, like I mentioned earlier, if you want to incorporate big data like uh, Spark or PySpark into your uh, repertoire and you want a project that focuses on using big data, uh, feel yeah. free to to do it. Don't let us stop you. But we don't uh, like we haven't gone out of our way to do it just because the big data tools that all the companies are using, like uh, like Kubernetes and stuff like that, tends to be a little more costly than uh, yeah. students can afford usually. But yeah. if you have that experience and you're interested, for sure, by all means, yeah. uh, feel free to feel free to pitch it. It sounds like a very interesting project. And that's something yeah. I think other people would be interested in doing as well. So yeah, for sure. And I think yeah, so that that's going to be more along the lines of next week's meeting. So this week is just kind of like going over how to join the project team and what we're about, and then uh -huh. we'll uh -huh. go more detail with the projects next week. Okay. Anyone else uh, want to share anything? Like why why they're interested, what they're looking to do, what what their experience of ML is, or if, even if you're brand new, you could maybe say why you're interested or what, what fields, what field of machine learning you're interested in exploring. Can I pick on someone? Do you... <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Can I pick someone? Cool. I'm interested to hear from Tiffany. Tiffany Fan. Hi guys. Hello. Um, why are you interested? Why are you here? Tell us a little bit about yourself. So I don't really know anything about machine learning. I haven't taken a class yet, but I'm, I'm interested to just try new things because I'm only a sophomore and yeah, that's nice. all I have. Welcome, yeah. Perfect, sounds great. Um, uh, thank you for uh, coming to the meeting. I think uh, starting with the trial project is a great place for you to start to test out if this interests you uh, and kind of challenge yourself. So I think we've created that in a way that beginners can actually uh, jump onto it right away. So. Looking forward to seeing you part of the club. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, if this is our last semester, do you guys need like a multi-semester commitment or is just one no, semester? No, uh, one semester is fine. Most, I'd imagine most projects uh, shouldn't take more than one semester unless you really want to make it very extravagant. Like s similar to like, like a group project in like a computer science course, except you get to pick the topic and stuff like that, not like some sort of 
big industry level application unless of course that's what you're aiming for in which case feel free to do that yeah i mean like there's no kind of requirement like if you if you come up in a certain group and y'all have like a uh, idea and you want to like take it to a startup then i mean y'all probably want to do it after uh, your semester but if it's just an education project then that's uh that's your choice cool thank you yeah thanks for thanks for your question anyone else want to share maybe 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 Gorov can pick on another person oh yeah i'm just gonna pick on one more person uh daniel Thank you for turning on your camera, by the way. Yeah, no problem. What's what's the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> Who are you? Why are you here? What are you interested oh. in? Oh, um, so um, yeah, I'm Daniel. Um, I'm a senior in computer networks and systems ma or um, yeah, computer networks and systems management. It was previously um, that same major was previously computers, electronics, networks, and technology. Um, the reason I'm here is uh, I want to enrich my course learning um, for machine learning. So I'm, take, I'm currently taking a course uh, in ML um, with, uh, what's his name? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and I just want to get deeper into machine learning. I think it's pretty neat and I don't know much about it. So that's why I'm here. Sounds good. Thanks for sharing. Um, yeah. Um, if there's anyone else that wants to share, I think we could uh, talk to you. Otherwise, I think we could probably move on. We have some other things in store. Okay. Well, I think as Asisa um, mentioned, right, he has experience. Did you want to say anything? Uh, sure. Hi guys, I'm Hasita. I go by Hasi. Um, yeah, like this is my second semester as a grad student. Last semester I took data mining and I got really interested in just like data science in general. And I think uh, Gaurav came to our class last semester and introduced this class, uh, this club, but then my the timings for the meeting didn't match well with my schedule so I couldn't join last semester. So yeah, I noticed that you guys changed the meeting time. So here I am. Nice, glad to have you. <laughs> welcome, welcome. I think I kind of remember you. Uh, I believe we, I believe you told me that the, uh, I don't know if you emailed me. No, okay. I did attend the first first meeting. Okay. Yeah. Well, good to see you here. Hi. No, no, thanks, thanks for thanks for dropping by and sharing. Uh, one more, one more thing. I actually uh, I want to um, clarify is so you have the Python notebook file. Uh, what happens here is you just go to this link, and so there, uh, we're gonna access more slots. But as a sample slot, there's gonna be these these slots that you can pick. So you click here, and then you 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 save it, and that'll that'll show that you're booked for us. Okay, so continuing on, I think we're and pass it on to Gaston, who's going to go over. Oh, yeah, let me uh, quickly paste this link. So I've I've compiled some uh, nice resources. I'll put it in the Slack as well. But uh, this is just like a nice little set of links. So I have a copy of our setup, uh, a slide deck from our ML uh, for high school, which is like a nice high level, no math summary of machine learning and how the like pipeline is a brief Python tutorial and collab because I know uh, I know there's some math students, uh, maybe not here, but like I know in my classes, I've encountered a couple of math students who are like uh, very knowledgeable of the math, understandably, but they're a little, they're not super uh, programming oriented. And then we also have the trial project guidelines and then the Docker and uh, I made a copy of the Docker and PySpark slides just in case anyone was interested and they wanted to learn more about Docker and PySpark, which we've done with a Jupyter notebook. That's also on our GitHub, which I will post here at some point. I literally just made a copy, but uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a nice set of resources, like uh, whether you're new or you're maybe 
a little bit experience. Uh, this this is like a work in progress. I plan to make it bigger, but it will be nice to just have like a set location for resources for people to look at, which I think uh, people will find very useful. If you want to go to the next slide. Did you and, want to did you want to share your own screen or did you want to? Um, oh, that's actually a good point. Okay, I'll, I'll that would sharing. probably be a little better. Let me. Uh, I'll just share my screen. OK. Let's turn this on. OK. So uh, this is a really important part, uh, setting up your computer to do trial projects. Uh, maybe you might have heard that like something like Collab is an option to do machine learning. And it's certainly a viable option. But in my opinion, it is a much worse experience in terms of quality of life and just doing it locally. Can so, I just interrupt really quickly? Yeah, go uh, ahead. This, this slide name is slightly a misnomer. Uh, this is just setting up your computer to do deep learning in general. Uh, so yeah, uh, even it's, if it's even if yeah. you don't have to do the trial it's, project, you should stay here and listen to kind of It's guess. more setting up for machine learning than specifically the trial project. But you will need this for the trial project. Yeah. So it's for <laughs> So we have some uh, dependencies here, uh, Conda, which is like a little package manager. And then we have a lot of, uh, we have four packages that we'll be installing, which are scikit-learn, which is a traditional machine learning library, pandas, which is a library that lets us handle data uh, like uh, from CSVs and stuff like that. Jupyter Notebook, which is uh, a tool we're going to be using. It's very oh, really? good, I'm sorry? Real quick, I just want to ask: Can we just are, 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 can we just download Anaconda, and we would be able to access uh, Pandas, Jupyter Notebook, and PyTorch? Because the Anaconda Navigator I saw has those applications. Or do we? You can, it... but Anaconda comes with a lot of bloat. So if you have the file space, feel free. Uh, this won't be as helpful, except for the end where you're verifying your installation works. But I personally don't recommend it comes because it, it comes with a lot of packages you're never going to use. I see. Gotcha. OK, so then we'll have Jupyter Notebook, which is like environment, sort of like an IDE, and then PyTorch, which is a deep learning library. So then uh, Conda is a, not only is it a package manager, it is also on. OK, uh, yes, we will make the, the video available later on the slide. So Conda playing double duty package manager and environment manager. And it actually lets us handle packages in multiple languages, not just Python. But unlike something like NPM, uh, Conda actually will handle dependencies for us. So like if you're missing, uh, if you need, uh, like let's say for PyTorch, you need a certain uh, version of NumPy, it'll go ahead and install that for you instead of saying, oh, you need this version of NumPy or stuff like that. So. so this is the big part. I didn't really understand this when I first got into machine learning, but being able to create separate isolated environments is fantastic. I cannot like reiterate enough how important it is because uh, I've gotten so many like, oh, uh, like version conflicts where a machine learning library requires a specific version of some dependency that conflicts with some other one. And then you uh, you might also want a specific version of a, of a package, like let's say PyTorch uh, 0 0.4, because it ha uh, it's less buggy than the current release, and it, it works with what you want. So here, uh, let me put the, oh, OK, I'll just put it in the chat real fast, so. So here, uh, Miniconda is what I uh, we recommend. It's a lot smaller. Instead of installing every single package, you can just select your version. Uh, we recommend 3.x. And you can also uh, change the version of Python that you're running within Conda. So it kind of matters, kind of doesn't matter. So you can just go here and select your installer, 3.8, 3.7, and stuff like that. Uh, just to kind of add on, I think uh, I, I just want to be explicit. Uh, if you are uh, following this, please kind of do this on your own computer, install everything onto your own computer. Uh, we're literally here right now to kind of help you do the installation. Yeah. So, 
because like okay. when you come into problems, uh, we're here already, so we okay. can help. Yeah. And also, yeah. I was gonna say we've done this in the past, and there has been at least like three people per session that that have had a problem. If you've already installed it, great. You don't need to worry about it. But for for people that say they aren't gonna have a problem, it is much easier to just do it as we're talking. Because then if you have a problem, you can type it in the chat. We've probably dealt with it before, and yeah. it's it's much easier to just get free help than to yeah. having to struggle to use Google. Right. Basically, please, please ask questions because um, we, I mean, even when we did this in person, people had a lot of issues and had questions. So, I mean, because it's online, it's probably going to be even more likely that people run into problems and it'll be harder. So, um, yes, please don't feel afraid to ask questions. Um, I know it might be more intimidating, I guess, because it's online, but uh, people have had issues in the past, um, like even in person. So we, we are expecting questions. So if you're stuck, you know, um, I think you can share your screen. Uh, we can figure it out together. So. Okay, yeah. so you'll select the correct version. I think for Windows, almost everybody's 64-bit now. The Python 3.x is the one you want. And same for Mac and Linux. So then uh, you'll do that. You'll install. So a quick disclaimer, uh, if you're on like Mac or Linux, uh, you'll be able to directly use all these uh, commands from your terminal, but Windows is special. You get this little prompt here called the Anaconda prompt. So here is the only time where like conda commands will work. Otherwise, it's not directly added to the path. Uh, I actually did add it to my path, so I can do it. But still, Anaconda prompt is the is the way to go. It uh, it makes it so also if you have like uh, like a base version of Python added to your path variable, it won't conflict at all and it will run correctly. And then you can just run like the conda help command, which I can just run from here. And it will not give me an error, which is the important part. I think I just went past it. So I'll just wait for like a couple minutes in case, I'll just wait for like, what, 30 seconds to a minute in case anybody has any questions. This is like the straightforward part that uh, should be relatively easy for people to accomplish. Actually, am I still visible? Doesn't look like anyone has any questions, so I'll move on. This is technically optional, but highly, highly recommended that you create an environment for the sets of packages you need. Uh, so how you do it is you can just say conda create dash dash name, and then the name of your environment. This allows you to do things like changing the version of Python you're using and packages in case some packages don't support like the most current up-to-date uh, version of Python. And then you can use the conda deactivate and slash deactivate commands to deactivate it. Why don't I just run these? That'll probably be easier. So I can just say. Yeah. Also, I, should, uh, I don't know if I got feedback from people. Are, are they still working on downloading the installer, going through the process? Okay. Verbal or chat? I'll, I'll just run some of the commands so we can say conda info dash. So here we can see I have the base one. I have one called fast AI, one called QA, and one called TF, which is for TensorFlow, QA, and fast AI, respectively. So then I can say, let's say I wanted to go to the TF one, I can say conda activate. activate I can't spell conda activate TF. Uh, and then now I'm in the TF one. And if I do like conda list, I will have not as many packages as I do in my base one. It only takes me like 30 seconds instead of like two minutes to go through all of them. <laughs> and then uh, I have a link to the docs here in case you uh, are interested in more commands, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. You can create an environment, you can swap to it and you can install stuff. I'm sorry, uh, Anaconda Navigator should work. You just have to 
make sure you open the prompt. Like you have uh, this thing, the Anaconda prompt. If you don't have it, then you have to like go to the navigator and okay, it's good that you have everything installed. So we'll open. Okay, so yeah, here's the navigator. It's kind of ugly, but uh, yeah, the important thing is just being able to access like the command prompt and stuff like that. So I think uh, I don't really need this, but you can just launch it from here and stuff like that. If you don't have it, uh, it'll t uh, force you to install it, which is imperative for Windows. OK, so I think that covers this optional but highly recommended step. So the next, we have installing everything. So if you've ever used pip, this should look very familiar. Uh, you can just, uh, now instead of pip, we're using conda. So like, for example, conda, oh, conda install scikit-learn, matplotlib, Jupyter, pandas. Uh, you can actually, uh, like pip, you can specify a version. But what's cool is, uh, is if you make a separate environment with conda, it actually has its own version of pip. So you don't have, like, if there's a pip specific package, then you don't need to worry about having any conflicts or stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Gorb, do you, have, do you actually have a question or did you just forget to turn the thing off? No, I don't have a question, my bad. Okay. <laughs> so here I can, uh, I can go ahead and run it. I'll just say conda install pandas. Depending on how slow or fast your computer is, this might take a while. But it's usually pretty quick and straightforward. So, uh, hey, Gora, would you mind linking the, like in my helpful links doc, can you just link the setup just in case people want to follow along later? It's already there. You already linked oh, it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So then uh, you're just going to pretty much repeat it for both, uh, all four of these. Installing PyTorch, uh, they have a lot of complicated commands, but I've uh, updated these as far as I know they're current. So Mac, uh, unfortunately, kind of sucks to be you. Uh, there's no GPU support. So you just have the base version with PyTorch, Torch Vision, Torch Audio. Uh, Windows and Linux, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, you can run this cool command that, uh, to use the CUDA 10.2 that will let you use your GPU to make the training much faster. Otherwise, you can just run the same command as Mac users. This one will take a little bit longer. And you can also just click this link if you want to do like uh, like the bleeding edge versions, so to speak. I just picked the most stable ones. So uh, verif this is like, I hope it doesn't open in a different window. So now we want to just make sure that this stuff works. So Jupyter Notebook, please open it. Ah, open in the correct one. So here uh, you would select like new Python 3. I already have one, so I'm just gonna open this one. So I can just say import torch. Oh, this is the wrong one. That's why I'm in the wrong environment. Okay, let me fix that. But Jupyter Notebook's kind of like an IDE. It does a lot of cool stuff for you that I can demonstrate once I have this. So here we can say like torch dot and then, whoops, tab. And then we have like this autocomplete. So I believe it's torch dot has, what the heck was it? Um, oh, torch dot. CUDA dot is available. So I have a GPU, so it should be telling me that it's true. And we can also uh, press 
Like if we hold shift and then press tab once, we'll get a little bit of the doc string. And then if we press tab again, it will uh, show us the entirety of the doc string, which we can scroll through if there's more stuff like that. But basically, you just want to make sure that uh, at the very least, you can run Jupyter Notebook and then run PyTorch. So uh, a little bit about Jupyter Notebook is that unlike uh, when you run like a regular script, which is just a one and done, uh, Jupyter Notebook will run this and then like save it in memory. So if I like define a variable called A and I set it to be five and then I want to and I call A again, it will say it's five. It won't like forget that I typed A and it's doesn't get garbage collected or anything like that which uh, can be a little inconvenient for like traditional programming, but for machine learning where uh, you might have to like after a step, go back and redo something, it can be very, very helpful. And then I can just delete this and delete this and we'll just save that. So that's pretty much the setup. Uh, it's basically just making sure that you have Conda, you can run Conda commands, you can install, uh, you make an environment if you want to, install stuff and then run the uh, Jupyter Notebook and correctly import stuff. So I hope I wasn't too fast. Uh, it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, if anyone has any problems, uh, please speak up now. I'm not sure what we have planned for after. I think Edward knows. Um, I mean, I think um, basically we're, we're basically done. We just need to talk about what we're going to do for next week. OK. Yeah. Cool. Then I can. Does, no does one nobody has have any questions? Yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Does, does everyone have it installed? I mean, yeah. Even if you came late. Like, is anyone currently working on it? Maybe we can see where you're currently at. Yeah, let me stop sharing really fast. Is, um, I know like someone raised, some people raised their hands earlier as like saying they installed the first part. Um, I think those people were saying that they already had it done. Oh, I see, that's right, okay. Um, is anyone having trouble? Like this, this we're, we're, we're we, if you have any questions, like, I mean, we're all here. Okay, uh, in that case, we can just um, go a little bit into what we're gonna talk about next week. Uh, so basically next week, we're gonna, presumably we're gonna have most of the projects turned in. And um, realistically, because um, we won't be able to check everybody, I believe, like we won't be able to get everyone's appointments in, we'll still be able, we'll, we'll, I mean, anyone can, I mean, just feel free to join in next week. And then we'll be talking about the projects that we have if you have any project ideas, uh, feel free to to present it. Uh, let me let me. Um, Gorov, do you have like the project uh, the project sheet again? What was the, the the setup? Yeah, I can look for it. So presuming that you um, finish the, the the trial project and you understand how it works. Uh, basically, you can be prepared next week to present a new project idea if you have one. Otherwise, we're just going to go over the current projects that we have, and you'll basically be able to see which project you'll be interested in. Actually, Are you referring to the sheet where it's like talking about how to make your own project? Yeah. yeah. Let me see. I, I think I, I see it. I think we could talk about that with people who are actually kind of uh, complete the trial project. Yeah, I, I think I think realistically, what, what's going to end up happening is, um, I think realistically, what's going to end up happening is um, we're not going to be able to look at everyone's projects on time. 
but keep in mind, uh, this is just to keep in mind for everybody in general. Like, like if you have a project idea and you finish the trial project and you feel like you know how the trial project works so that you can um, complete the interview, well, just have this in mind for next week if you have any ideas possibly. This basically goes over a guideline on how the project works and how to design a new project. But yeah, if, if, um, if that's, uh, if, if nobody has any questions, I think we can wrap it up actually uh, to today or a little bit early. Great, thank you for everyone. Uh, yeah, thank you everyone. Well, we'll post this on YouTube so you can always go back and see it.